Protect your privacy online with the best VPN for gaming, ExpressVPN. And visit expressvpn.com slash gillymaster, linked in the description, to find out how you can get three months free. So we're in the month of May now, and it's been almost a whole year since we last heard any information about the expanded and enhanced version of GTA 5. And even when it was announced, the information we got was really vague. All we know is that the game is going to feature a range of technical improvements, visual upgrades, and performance enhancements to take full advantage of the latest hardware, making the game more beautiful and more responsive than ever, and that's a straight quote from the Rockstar Newswire regarding the expanded and enhanced version. And ever since then, we haven't heard a peep about the game, so in this video I want to first discuss when we could see more information, and also, what needs to be done to the game for it to be a success? Now, this is kind of Rockstar's MO when it comes to things like this. The first trailer of GTA 5 was released in November of 2011, and we didn't see the first actual gameplay of the game until July of 2013 when they released the official gameplay video before the release just two months later. Granted, GTA 5 was delayed, which probably explains the huge gap between the initial trailer and the actual gameplay. But Red Dead Redemption 2 also followed a similar path with the reveal trailer being unveiled in October of 2016 and the first gameplay video being shown off in the summer of 2018 just a few months before releasing in October. Now RDR 2 was also delayed but the patterns are there, we get the reveal trailer for the game, then in the summer we get a gameplay trailer before the game releasing sometime in the fall. So if we base our predictions off of those previous experiences, it's very likely that we will get some actual gameplay of the expanded and enhanced version sometime this summer within the next 3 months I would say. That is if the game wasn't delayed, but from what it looks like now, it's still set to release in the second half of the year. But here's where this kind of worries me, because since it's a remaster, it's not a brand new game, and as such, it's not going to drive up the same hype as a new game would. And because the announcement trailer was literally just old footage of the game dating back to even PS3 era, it's really not the best look, and that first reveal trailer for the expanded and enhanced version did not go well with the community. And considering it's about to be a year before we even get more information about it, this next trailer has to be pretty massive to make up for the flop that the announcement trailer was. The way I look at it is, they almost have to be planning something massive for the re-release of this game. If it was only a simple update in the graphics to match the PC version and maybe like an FPS boost, people aren't going to be very happy, let me just put it that way. Especially with the fact that it would be like a year and a half since the announcement from when it's actually releasing. If all that wait was only for a slight visual upgrade and 60 FPS, that's going to be very disappointing. But I do truly believe it's going to be much bigger than what people are thinking, and that's not just me being optimistic, I really do think it's going to be more than just a bump to PC graphics and frame rates. The first reason being what we just talked about, would it really take them almost two years of development time to just give the new consoles PC graphics and higher frame rates? I'm not a developer, so I can't say for certain, but I find it really hard to believe they would need so much time just to do that. And then we have Strauss Zelenik, the CEO of Take-Two, which owns Rockstar Games. During a conference call back in March, when asked about remastering titles, he said this, I'm not sure they'll be a bigger part of the strategy. Remastering has always been a part of the strategy. We've done differently than the competition. We don't just port titles over. We actually take the time to do the very best job we can, making the title different for the new release, for the new technology that we're launching it on. It was a standard bearer when it was launched. It continued to be the standard bearer in the second generation. We'll see how Grand Theft Auto does in the next generation. Obviously, I'm confident that Rockstar is going to deliver just a great experience, but you can't do that if you're just doing a simple port. And that's a full-on quote coming straight from Straw Zelnick himself. And after hearing those words coming straight from the CEO of Take-Two, let me ask you this, does an upgrade to PC graphics and higher FPS values sound like just a simple port? Because to me it does. And from what he's saying, it sounds like the game is going to be overhauled quite a bit to make it feel different. And you know, taking a look at the PS3 and Xbox 360 versions of the game compared to the Xbox One and PS4 versions, that really wasn't a simple port either. With those versions, we of course saw massive improvements in graphics, but we also got double the player counts, almost, in online lobbies, passive mode was completely reworked so that you would go invisible, and the biggest of all, first person mode was added into the game. I feel like first person mode is really undervalued in terms of just how much work was required to implement such a thing. I mean, think about it, every single car interior had to be redone with detail, every single weapon had to have an increased amount of detail added onto it, and they also had to make new animations for weapon reloads in first person along with the ADS animations. There really is a lot that goes into that, especially coming from the last gen versions. And I would say with confidence that the current Xbox One and PS4 versions of the game do feel like an entirely different game than the old gen PS3 and 360 versions because of all those changes. But that then leaves the question, what needs to be done to make the PS5 and the Xbox Series X versions feel like a brand new game then? One of the main ways to make GT Line feel different, in my opinion, is to go back and really look at each vehicle and just rebalance everything. 
Through the years, update after update, the older vehicles always get left behind. There's always a new vehicle that's just way better than the old ones. And for weaponized vehicles, obviously the Mark II is a big problem, but there's a lot of other weaponized vehicles that are just terrible or unbalanced and could use some work. But make no mistake, I'm not just talking about weaponized vehicles when I say this. Things like handling flags, vehicle classes, engine sounds, all of those could be overhauled and enhanced and it would greatly increase the immersion of the game. Graphically, there have been rumors that it's going to be upgraded to RDR2's version of the Rage engine. Nothing is confirmed or anything, of course, but if GTA 5 could look as good as RDR2 does, that would be more than enough improvement there because Red Dead Redemption 2 is a very gorgeous game. It looks beautiful. It also has volumetric clouds, which you don't really notice as much in Red Dead because there are no flying vehicles where you could actually see them. But in GTA with volumetric clouds, you could take a plane and actually be able to fly into the clouds like they actually exist and not just a visual thing like they are now. And that would be a giant graphical leap for the franchise. But on top of that, Expanded and Enhanced is going to need to be a massive step up in content too. Sure, vehicle rebalances and better graphics are great, but there still needs to be that wow factor that really drives people to buy the game again because I've seen comments on forums of people saying like, graphics just aren't enough to make me want to buy the game again for full price, like 60 or even $70, which is what games cost these days. And it's kind of hard not to agree with them. I mean, GTA 5, this is going to be the third time that it's released. If there's not a substantial improvement in like content for the game, then it's going to be a massive turnoff to a wide variety of people. One wow factor I could think of is a map expansion, but I really just don't see that happening, at least yet anyways. I really do believe that the next step is a brand new playable area though, like a new free roam area. Kaya Parika was nice, but really it's only for a heist mission, it's just a glorified heist location. We really need something that's like new to free roam, like we've been free roaming in Los Santos for the past 8 years now. And logically I think that would be the next step with the more powerful hardware. It's not like it has to be anything crazy like the entire Liberty City map, but just somewhere new to free roam on, you know? Somewhere that isn't the exact same place we've been seeing for the past 8 years, just something new to put our eyes on. Anyways, let me know what you guys think about the expanded and enhanced version. Do you think it's going to be a substantial upgrade, or do you think it'll just be a very minor one? Let me know in the comments section. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more guide and PvP related content. Huge thank you to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a channel member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.